In this video, I will discuss the concept of gas velocity as it relates to kinetic molecular theory. Our objective is to explain the relationship between three key gas variables, temperature, velocity, and molar mass. Let's review what we've learned thus far about ideal gas behavior. It's highly recommended that you review the ideal gas law video before watching this video. We have assumed that the particles that make up gases behave like hard spherical objects in constant random motion. Those gas particles have negligible volume. Those particles also move in a straight line until they collide either with one another or with the walls of their container. When particles collide, these collisions are completely elastic, meaning there's no change in kinetic energy before and after the collision. No attractive nor repulsive forces exist between molecules or between molecules in the walls of their container. And lastly, the average kinetic energy only depends on the temperature of the gas sample. For this video, it will be important to recall that kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared, where m is mass and v is velocity. All of these assumptions have important implications regarding the molecular speed of an ideal gas sample, which is also referred to as molecular velocity. Here is a plot of the number of molecules on the y-axis against molecular speed in meters per second on the x-axis. The only difference between the two gas samples represented by the two different curves on this plot is that the gas samples have different temperatures. The blue curve corresponds to a sample of oxygen gas at 25 degrees Celsius. The pink curve corresponds to a sample of oxygen gas at 1000 degrees Celsius. One key feature of the curves on this plot is that they indicate molecular speed of a gas sample can be represented or is represented by a distribution. This is important because it means that not all molecules in a gas sample are moving at the same speed. The most probable or most common speed is represented by the maximum value of each curve. So this maximum top peak point for the blue curve is the most probable speed for oxygen gas at 25 Celsius, whereas the pink peak of the, this pink curve represents the most probable speed for oxygen gas at 1000 Celsius. You will notice that the most probable speed is faster for the higher temperature gas sample, and also that the distribution is more broad meaning more spread out for the higher temperature gas sample. Here's another series of plots showing the numbers of molecules again versus molecular speed. This time, we're looking at four different gas samples that are all at the same temperature. The difference is that the gas samples have different molar masses. You'll observe that the gas with the lowest molar mass is helium, represented by the red curve, and the gas with the highest molar mass is oxygen, represented by this dark blue curve. When observing the difference in the most probable speed of these two gases, what do you notice? The most probable speed of helium is much faster than that of oxygen. It appears from this plot that the most probable speed increases as the molar mass of the gas sample decreases. Let's explore this in some more detail. One of the key assumptions in kinetic molecular theory is that kinetic energy only depends on temperature. Let's imagine a mixture of fluorine and hydrogen held in a sample or a container of gas with a given temperature. How do the kinetic energies of the fluorine molecules compare to the hydrogen molecules? If the gas temperature of the fluorine and hydrogen gases are equal, therefore their kinetic energies must also be equal. We, we know that the molar mass of hydrogen is much smaller than the molar mass of fluorine. 
since kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared, that implies that these different gas molecules in the mixture must have different velocities. The mass of fluorine is larger than hydrogen, which is represented by this large letter m versus the small m for hydrogen. And since they're both, they both have the same kinetic energy, the volume of fluorine, or the, excuse me, the velocity of fluorine is much, much lower than that of hydrogen. The very important implication of this idea, which is the kinetic molecular theory impact on molecular velocity, is that the only way for particles of different masses to have the same kinetic energy is for them to have different velocities. This relationship can be summarized mathematically using the root mean squared velocity, or the Greek letter mu. This velocity is directly proportional to temperature and inversely proportional to molar mass. Note the units of molar mass based on the units of R. This value of R, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, is selected to ensure that the units for root mean squared velocity are in meters per second. Practice applying this concept through building an explanation. Pause the video to work on this, uh, work on this problem and unpause when you think you have a solution. Here we have two curves, A and B. The difference between them is that they're representing two different gas samples with two different temperatures. That's the only difference between the gas samples are their temperatures. Because curve B has a more has the, the most probable speed of curve B is around 800 meters per second and the most probable speed for curve A is around 400 meters per second. This is coming from the maximum values of these two curves. Curve B must correspond to the higher temperature gas sample because its average velocity um, is greater Therefore, and we know that, of course, average velocity or root mean squared velocity is directly proportional to temperature. Thus, curve B, B must correspond to the higher gas temperature sample. This video has explored the relationship between temperature, velocity, and molar mass based on assumptions made in kinetic molecular theory. Practice explaining these concepts uh, in different ways on your own. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.